All right, um, welcome. So pretty excited here to share some of Marvell's new technologies that we announced today to really enable the open building blocks for next generation or emerging SSD form factors. You saw Kushagra from Microsoft present Project Denali. These blocks are actually some of the initial blocks to go after that type of architecture. So we'll cover some of the industry trends and then how these SSD solutions help address those requirements. So if you look today, the data center is increasingly virtualized and multi-tenant. So what this means is you have not only cloud service companies like Microsoft, Amazon, providing cloud services to companies where they host everything and use their platforms to serve their customers, but you also have enterprises who are actually providing their infrastructure for their inside customer base or user base. And those are becoming multi-tenant, multi-highly virtualized environments where a server is going to actually have different types of users that's got different qualities of service, performance requirements, and applications they want to run on it. So if you're a data center user, you're traditionally used to having your own server, running your own application with certain specific performance metrics, quality of service metrics. Unfortunately, as you move to a multi-tenant environment, which is very virtualized, you have a storage pool that actually now is shared between all these different users. Unfortunately, today, a lot of the virtualization is all done in the hypervisor provided by VMware or Microsoft's uh, Hyper-V. Unfortunately, that is taking cycles away from the actual CPU cycles that the enterprise or the cloud provider is renting out to their customers and cannot guarantee quality of service to the customer base. So if I'm renting a service that I'm looking for XYZ performance or XYZ uh, latency numbers, but the software stack running on those CPUs cannot guarantee that because of too many users on it, that becomes a problem. And this is one of the areas that as you look out into the more and more cloud workloads and more workloads moving into the cloud specifically, you want your end user to have specific SLAs and you want to provide that to them and meet those requirements. Unfortunately, today's infrastructure has some limitations which is costing some of the end users not to go into the cloud because of this QoS. And we'll cover how you could potentially address that going forward with some of the enabling technologies that Marvell is developing. The other big phenomena that's happening in the data center is the amount of applications and workloads is increasingly increasing very, very strong right now. And unfortunately, it's also evolving with many new workloads coming up that weren't even planned for. If you look here, there's a great example. You know, you fast forward, uh, you, you backtrack about 15 years ago when I started my storage career, there was no social networking, right? So all those systems that were designed were more related to databases and so on. Now you have machine learning, content delivery, uh, deep learning, and these are all different requirements that have differing uh, storage specific needs to actually meet their requirements, right? Um, so I think the key message here is workloads, workloads are continuously evolving, and there's really no one who can tell what tomorrow's workloads are going to look like. And this puts a drastic challenge on infrastructure providers, and they are looking for solutions, such as like Project Denali, where it gives you more flexibility to manage that storage pool and increase the efficiencies and the QoS to the actual end user. And if you look at each of these workloads, each has optimal storage requirements. That could be capacity, you know, where some workloads need a lot of capacity, specifically like if you're looking at a machine learning type of application, you want a big data set that you want to analyze, you'll have a huge capacity. There'll be others where you just want to cache certain workloads where your capacity will be a little lower. 
And you know, these all evolve and differ from each of the different applications and workloads. Similarly, performance. Some are read-intensive applications. Some are write-intensive applications. Some are random. Some are sequential. As you can imagine, all these different workloads have you know, differing requirements, and not one piece of storage solves all of these. Then there's the latency side. Some are very latency sensitive from a write perspective. You want to, you just did a, completed a transaction. You want to store that right away so it's persistent. Others, you want to get the data very quickly back and read it back quickly, and that's a different requirement. That's why you're starting to see some of this persistent memory technology that's coming out, NVDIMs, 3D cross points, really to address this latency area. Endurance, life, and redundancy are other areas. Some, some workloads are very write intensive, so you're going to wear out the storage very quickly. Others are very read intensive, where the actual life and endurance is much longer, you're able to keep it. And then certain workloads, you need redundancy, not only redundancy by replicating the data, but also by actually having hardware replication or redundancy, two paths to the actual storage. Next one is some of the workloads are actually host and application accelerated type of environments such as Project Denali alluded to, you'll want to do some kind of offloads and acceleration above the storage tier. And this depends, again, on the different workloads. Power and thermals, as we know, as you get more and more dense, the power becomes a bigger challenge, as well as thermals. And actually, thermals is probably a bigger concern than power to manage all that density in a given 1U or whatever form factor you're optimizing your infrastructure for. Security. Again, Microsoft talked about this today with their Cerebus is actually another piece. Every environment has different security requirements. And what we're seeing is this continues to evolve. And I think it's very important that the actual SSDs and the data storage actually is very flexible on supporting that. Unit of scale. Some of these infrastructure areas need a big unit of scale. Some need a small unit of scale. Again, different form factors, different storage solutions. and then. Last but not least, dollar per gigabyte. Now, dollar per gigabyte is one metric. You can, you can put another metric of IOPS per gigabyte for certain workloads. And that's actually in the server storage environment that I'm talking about, the virtualized environment. They're actually more worried about IOPS per gigabyte, actually, than dollars per gigabyte. Now, at the end of the day, any infrastructure guy will say dollars per gig is the most important. But certain workloads actually are more focused on actually optimizing the performance per storage. So at the end of the day, all these different requirements are potentially differing for the workloads. But at the end of the day, guaranteeing quality of service is critical for the majority of this. And this is a key thing I want to emphasize, is quality of service, the ability to monitor what you're providing to your customer base. These are critical items, and you can do it all in software because you start to lose some of the guarantees in performance. And two, if you're a cloud service provider, you're renting your CPU cycles out to your customer base. You're making money every time you rent out a CPU cycle. So you want to offload that CPU as much as possible so you can give that to your customer to generate revenues and provide high qualities of service with offloads in the hardware. So if you look at the current storage solutions, be it NVMe add-in cards, M.2 SSDs, U.2 SSDs, and our good old 3.5-inch HDDs that's still the majority of bytes in the enterprise data centers, these are not addressing those workloads optimally. They address certain workloads well, but they don't address every workload optimally. And I think this is where the industry is starting to innovate and come up with new initiatives, new form factors, new projects like Denali, and I think this is a big opportunity for the OCP community to work together to come up with standards. Because the key thing here is cost is critical for the customer base. And having industry standards is critical. Even if it's not a JEDEC standard or a T10 type of standard, having an OCP standard is critical for having multiple sources and keeping the cost structures optimized. So if you look at the current activities in the market, you have emerging industry standard SSD form factors. You have the EDSFF, or better known as the Intel ruler. That is a very interesting new form factor that lets us do some new creative stuff, not only to increase capacity, but you can start to put some innovation offload engines into those EDSFF. 
NGSFF, another form factor from, uh, led by our friends at Samsung, again, another creative form factor. Now, those are good form factors to get us started, but I can promise you right now, it's not the end of new form factors coming. Expect more new designs coming. You saw, I think at the last OCP Summit, our friends at Facebook had a drive called, or um, a carrier called Ava. Ava was putting four M.2s into a carrier. That's an example of another form factor, another design. Expect more of this type of innovations coming forward, but us as an industry really needs to drive towards standard high volume solutions so you can actually get the cost structures that we all want to drive, um, the, to drive scale going forward. So I view these new form factors as the starting point. I do view them as innovation sandboxes. So you have this area of space, how can you innovate in that form factor, leveraging the stand, industry standard connectors, PCB structures? That's what's needed to really drive economies of scale going forward, and I think you're gonna see that in the coming year with some of the innovations we're working with the OCP community members. So what are some of the potential new innovations for these emerging form factors? Workload accelerators. Why not put some of these offload engines like key value, but let's have standard key values. Like Kushagra talked about, people are doing all their own implementations. Can we get to one that's more industry standard that everyone can evolve around? Same thing with in compute, programmable logic, machine learning. These are all great buzzwords that all the startups everywhere are putting on their slides, but to drive volume adoption, you need standards. And I think that's a critical thing where the OCP community, we can work together to develop these innovative solutions. Emerging memories, why not put some new memories on these SSD form factors? Put some resistive RAM, put some 3D cross point, do some hybrid memory architectures. You know, our good friends at LightOn introduced uh, today a nice NVMe M.2 hybrid NVRAM drive based on Marvell controller technology that mixes DRAM and NAND with two namespaces. So you can actually write your low latency into the DRAM and keep it persistent with a super cap. Those are the type of innovations you want to drive. Leverage, leverage high volume industry standard components and innovate around that. Then there's going to be new protocols and interfaces, right? We're right now working on NVMe 1.3, which helps you take care of some of the IO determinism, takes care of some of the other new innovations you want to do at the protocol level. We'll have obviously more NVMe 1.4, 1.5. Then there's going to be NVMe over fabric, right? NVMe over fabric. Why stop at NVMe over fabric into a JBOD or into a storage system? Why not go to the drive in the future? Why not innovate to that level and really have distributed storage? in the future. Then there's the Gen Z and Open Capi interfaces and protocols that are being invented. That also provides opportunity for more innovation and new architectures. So these are some of the key building blocks and uh, form fact uh, where you can leverage this stuff to go after new form factors. So I think it's a really good opportunity to show what we can do as a community to innovate leveraging industry standard components. Now let's talk about some of the Marvell solutions we just announced today. Let's start with the industry's first NVMe SSD switch. So I really want to specify here, this is an NVMe switch, not a PCIe switch. What's the difference? Here, we're not, we're not just fanning out PCIe lanes and propagating the PCIe commands. We're actually terminating the PCIe and virtualizing the storage pool behind it, enabling you to have multiple namespaces, um, and enable you to do reservations and so on, and really deal with all the NVMe type of protocol behind. Really trying to optimize how you deal with storage. And here we'll have the capability to aggregate up to four SSD controllers and really get you up to performances close to 1.6 million IOPS, 6.4 gigabytes per second of throughput. And the key thing here, because we've integrated virtualization capabilities into this device, you're able to offload the CPU. So when I, remember I talked about virtualized environments, multi-tenants, you're gonna have thousands of users trying to share a piece of storage. This device will help you allocate and guarantee quality of service to the host. And this is just the first generation. Kashagra talked about storage accelerators. This is a storage accelerator. Virtualizing your storage pool, offloading the host. 
Now let's talk about our bread and butter at Marvell, our SSD controller business. This, this is our latest generation of SSDs for NVMe, and they support both single and dual ported by four. They integrate our leading edge error correction NAND edge technology to really enable QLC NAND going forward. These devices support virtualization. They support SRIOV with uh, up to 64 virtual functions and the performance up to 800K IOPS on the random read side of things and up to 3.6 gigabytes per second of throughput. Now you can use this, these common building blocks to build all your different types of storage. Leverage the investment to get the most ROI out of it. An M.2 2280, an M.2 22110, U.2 uh, SSD, all leveraging that same controller. Now take, start, here's one example of innovation. Put that NVMe switch in a U.2 and you can actually now create a scalable M.2s inside that drive. So that's with one drive, one M.2, then put another M.2, you get a by four if you wanted to, or NVMe switch will virtualize all that storage behind it and give you multiple namespaces to access over the NVMe protocol. And you could make it a by four or you can make it dual ported. So really enabling you to do a lot of flexibility, a lot of innovation. And you know, from an OCP perspective, what's cool about this? It's modular, simple, and open. Again, we're here to really drive volume and scale to get the economics out of the equation. And I think that's the key thing here as a community, having common building blocks that you can leverage across these different form factors and into the new form factors. So how does this scale into the new form factors? You got the ruler or EDSFF, where here we're showing an example where you take two Marvell controllers and you can create a drive that scales up to 800K IOPS with up to 32 NAND packages and supporting up to 16 gigabytes of DRAM. So as an example, assuming your NAND die is 500 gigabits, you'll be able to do, uh, you'll be able to do a 16 terabyte drive. If you have a one gigabit, uh, gigabyte uh, die, you'll be able to do 32 terabytes. So that's a lot of storage packed in there. Similarly, now if you want to get more performance, use our NVMe switch that virtualizes the storage behind it and you get up to 1.5 million IOPS. You add a little bit more cost because you're putting the NVMe switch, but you're getting the performance. And as I mentioned, the Amazons, the Microsofts of the world, they have applications where it's IOPS per gigabyte. Not dollars per gigabyte, but IOPS per gigabyte. So this is where, uh, going back to the premise that you want to have certain form factors addressing different applications in the data center, be it on the server side or the storage side, this gives you the building blocks to do that. And last but not least, if you really want higher capacity and higher performance, you could put four of our controllers behind our NVMe switch, as I highlighted, to get you up to 1.6 million IOPS and 40 NAND packages. Now, let's talk about some of the innovation. We have some good folks in here who are working on emerging memories, working on in-compute acceleration engines. Here, use our NVMe switch with your emerging memory controller. Build a tiering caching type of architecture where this one form factor gives you NAND storage and gives you your emerging memory. I talked about my light on friends who are doing a hybrid, hybrid memory SSD where they're using DRAM and NAND and using a super cap. This is actually taken to the next level where you take good technologies from our friends of Intel or Micron who have the 3D cross point, create something like this as an example. And then there's MRAM and then there's resistive RAM. That's one architecture you can do and that's where the innovation of the community come into play. And then the second one, which is where more of the startup activity is right now, working on acceleration engines, be it in compute, be it key value stores, be it some compression type of engines, or configurable logic. That could be easily an FPGA that sits there. Marvell has interfaces on this chip that's not only NVMe centric, but also has uh, an interface called Mochi on our controllers that will let you go directly into our controllers and enable you to do some more optimizations. So those are some of the innovations we want to work with the OCP community and our partners to bring to market as the ecosystem evolves to address the evolving uh, requirements of our data center customers. So to summarize, you know, you see the virtualized data centers continuing to grow and the end users are seeking 
bare metal performance. This is a key thing I want you all to take away from here. Bare metal performance is like if you had a dedicated server running your application, you know what kind of performance you're getting. Unfortunately, when you put that in a virtualized environment, you have multiple users going in there. You have software that's managing those multiple users, managing the storage. Some of the QS, QoS quality of service metrics unfortunately break. The monitoring capabilities start to break. And having offload accelerators like our NVMe switch enables you to take advantage of some of that stuff. The number of workloads are increasing with differing storage needs. Again, this is another key one, and I think Kashagra's keynote today really highlighted why you have to change the architectures going forward, really because of all the differing requirements going forward and optimizing from an efficiency perspective. Again, the current solutions, you know, we love all our three and a half inch HDDs, two and a half inch HDDs, and all the M.2s, U.2s. Unfortunately, those are not all addressing the storage requirements in an optimal manner. So again, we gotta innovate as an industry to come up with new types of form factors, new types of solutions to increase the efficiencies of these hyperscale emerging data centers. Emerging SSD form factors, great stepping stone. It gives us a sandbox of innovation opportunity, right? We can use that as a sandbox, start to innovate, and I think that's gonna be a key starting point even for Project Denali, right? You saw Project Denali, how he wanted to carve it up with the host versus the target. That's just showing you early stages at a high level of how the architecture can evolve, but the form factor is gonna also evolve potentially going forward. And then last but not least, just a plug for my company, is we have chipsets that help enable this, right? I think we've been in the storage business for a long time, HDDs, SSDs. Key thing here is we have the scale to continue to invest and not just do point solutions, but be your end-to-end -end solution provider. With Cavium coming on board as well, we add more value for these architectures going forward. And we're looking forward, really, to work with the OC community members to drive these innovations. And I think Project Denali is just one of the first opportunities, but there'll be many more. Thanks. So we got about three minutes for questions, so um, let's open it up. If you could go to the mic if you have a question, that'd be great, or I'll repeat the question. Any questions? Was it that straightforward? <laughs> Yes. So I think the question was, you know, I talked about compression, encryption, as some of the offload engines. What are some of the others? So I think, you know, this is a, a big area of innovation. You look at all the SSD startups getting funding today. They're talking about in-compute or computational storage. They're talking about key value storage. Those are some examples. You know, I think Kashagra talked about not only compression encryption, but he also talked about um, erasure coding, acceleration. You know, so there's, I think this is TBD. This is where the industry, there's a lot of opportunity to put more engines. You know, one of the areas I'm really excited about, and again, it's a buzzword, so we'll see where it goes, is artificial intelligence, right? Learning the data patterns that are going to your storage, right? Some inference and stuff like that. So these are some of the areas, right? And then there's a lot of startups working in this space, but these are just examples. And I think as a community, we wanna work on those and standardize it, because right now it's all very proprietary. No one wants proprietary, because that's not gonna scale and it'll be very boutique and very niche right? That's not what we want. Okay, next question. You, you just mentioned that's, uh, 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 the form factor have uh, EDSFF and uh, NGSFF, and uh, you mean that the, the OCP will define a different one? Yeah, I think, f I don't want to speak for the OCP community, I just believe as you look at today, you look at what we did at the last Open Compute Summit, Facebook did this AVA, AVA SSD, that was their own carrier type of look. Then you look at what Microsoft did with their JBOF using four M.2s going into a carrier. Those are some of the first innovations, right? But just think, fast forward a couple of years from now, you'll see more of those types of innovations around some of these building blocks, as well as around Project Denali, as an example. Okay, I know. Okay. Any other questions? One minute left. <laughs> If not, you can always pull me to the side. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Have a good one.